Squatting is the action of occupying an abandoned or unoccupied area of land or a building, usually residential, that the squatter does not own, rent or otherwise have lawful permission to use. Author Robert Neuwirth suggested in 2004 that there were one billion squatters globally. Yet, according to Kessia Reeve, Squatting is largely absent from policy and academic debate and is rarely conceptualized, as a problem, as a symptom, or as a social or housing movement. Squatting can be related to political movements, such as anarchist, autonomist, or socialist. It can be a means to conserve buildings or simply to provide affordable housing. Overview Worldwide In many of the world's poorer countries, there are extensive slums or shanty towns, typically built on the edges of major cities and consisting almost entirely of self-constructed housing built without the landowner's permission. While these settlements may, in time, grow to become both legalized and indistinguishable from normal residential neighborhoods, they start off as squats with minimal basic infrastructure. Thus, there is no sewerage system, drinking water must be bought from vendors or carried from a nearby tap, and if there is electricity, it is stolen from a passing cable. During the Great Recession and increased housing foreclosures in the late 2000s, squatting became far more prevalent in Western, developed nations. Besides being residences, some squats are used as social centers or host giveaway shops, pirate radio stations, or cafes. In Spanish speaking countries, squatters receive several names, such as ocupas in Spain, Chile, or Argentina, from the verb ocupar meaning to occupy, or paracadistas in Mexico meaning parachuters because they «parachute» themselves at unoccupied land. Typology Dutch sociologist Hans Prugett separates types of squatters into five distinct categories Deprivation-based, i.e., homeless people squatting for housing need an alternative housing strategy, e.g., people unprepared to wait on municipal lists to be housed take direct action Entrepreneurial, e.g., people breaking into buildings to service the need of a community for cheap bars, clubs etc. Conservational, i.e., preserving monuments because the authorities have let them decay Political, e.g., activists squatting buildings as protests or to make social centers Topic. Legality In many countries, squatting is in itself a crime, in others, it is only seen as a civil conflict between the owner and the occupants. Property law and the state have traditionally favored the property owner. However, in many cases where squatters had de facto ownership, laws have been changed to legitimize their status. Squatters often claim rights over the spaces they have squatted by virtue of occupation, rather than ownership. In this sense, squatting is similar to and potentially a necessary condition of adverse possession, by which a possessor of real property without title may eventually gain legal title to the real property. Anarchist Colin Ward comments, Squatting is the oldest mode of tenure in the world, and we are all descended from squatters. This is as true of the Queen of the United Kingdom with her 176,000 acres 710 square kilometers as it is of the 54% of householders in Britain who are owner-occupiers. They are all the ultimate recipients of stolen land, for to regard our planet as a commodity offends every conceivable principle of natural rights." Others have a different view. UK police official Sue Williams, for example, has stated that squatting is linked to anti-social behaviour and can cause a great deal of nuisance and distress to local residents. In some cases there may also be criminal activities involved. Topic. Perceptions The public attitude towards squatting varies, depending on legal aspects, socioeconomic conditions, and the type of housing occupied by squatters. In particular, while squatting of municipal buildings may be treated leniently, squatting of private property often leads to strong negative reaction on the part of the public and authorities. Squatting, when done in a positive and progressive manner, can be viewed as a way to reduce crime and vandalism to vacant properties, depending on the squatter's ability and willingness to conform to certain socio-economic norms of the community in which they reside. 
Moreover, squatters can contribute to the maintenance or upgrading of sites that would otherwise be left unattended, the neglect of which would create and has created abandoned, dilapidated and decaying neighborhoods within certain sections of moderately to highly urbanized cities or boroughs, one such example being New York City's Lower Manhattan from roughly the 1970s to the post-9-11 era of the new millennium. Topic. Adverse possession Adverse possession is a method of acquiring title to property through possession for a statutory period under certain conditions. Countries where this principle exists include England and the United States, based on common law. However, some non-common law jurisdictions have laws similar to adverse possession. For example, Louisiana has a legal doctrine called acquisitive prescription, which is derived from French law. Africa. There are large squatter communities in Kenya, such as Kibera in Nairobi. An estimated 1,000 people live in the Grande Hotel Beira in Mozambique. The Zabaline Settlement and the City of the Dead are both well-known squatter communities in Cairo. In South Africa, squatters tend to live in informal settlements or squatter camps on the outskirts of the larger cities, often but not always near townships. In the mid-1990s, an estimated 7.7 .7 million South Africans lived in informal settlements, a fifth of the country's population. The number has grown rapidly in the post-apartheid era. Many buildings, particularly in the inner city of Johannesburg have also been occupied by squatters. Property owners or government authorities can usually evict squatters after following certain legal procedures including requesting a court order. In Durban, the city council routinely evicts without a court order in defiance of the law, and there has been sustained conflict between the city council and a shack dwellers movement known as Abilali Basmiandolo. There has been a number of similar conflicts between shack dwellers, some linked with the Western Cape anti-eviction campaign, and the city council in Cape Town. One of the most high-profile cases was the brutal evictions of squatters in the N2 Gateway homes in the suburb of Delft, where over 20 residents were shot, including a three-year-old child. There have been numerous complaints about the legality of the government's actions and, in particular, whether the ruling of the judge was unfair given his party affiliations and the highly politicized nature of the case. Many of the families are now squatting on Symphony Way, a main road in the township of Delft. The city of Cape Town has been threatening them with eviction since February 2008. Topic: Asia. Topic: India. In Mumbai, there are an estimated 10 to 12 million inhabitants and 6 million of them are squatters. The squatters live in a variety of ways. Some possess two- or three-story homes built out of brick and concrete which they have inhabited for years. Gita Nagar is a squatter village based beside the Indian Navy compound at Kalaba. Squatter colony in Malad East has existed since 1962, and now, people living there pay a rent to the city council of 100 rupees a month. Dharavi is a community of one million squatters. The stores and factories situated there are mainly illegal and so are unregulated, but it is suggested that they do over $1 million in business every day. Other squatters live in shacks, situated literally on a pavement next to the road, with very few possessions. Activists such as Jokin Arputham are working for better living conditions for slum dwellers. Topic. Malaysia Many of Malaysia's squatters live on land owned by Karitapi Tana Melayu, most notably railway reserve land along railway tracks, as well as at construction sites. <laughs> Philippines Squatting is a major issue in the Philippines especially but not exclusively in urban areas of the Philippines. Squatting gained notice right after World War II, when people whose homes were destroyed by war were left homeless. They built makeshift houses called, Barong Barong, on abandoned private land. In the late 20th century, the squatter population largely grew but the Philippine government has made separate attempts over the years to transfer some squatters to low-cost housing projects, such as projects in Tondo in the former Smoky Mountain Landfill, Taguig Bliss Housing Project, and Rodriguez, Rizal. Philippine law, and society more generally, distinguishes between squatters who squat because of poverty and 
professional squatters who squat in hopes of getting a payment to leave the property. Philippine based media and journalists refer squatters as informal settlers. Sri Lanka Taiwan The National Property Administration, Ministry of Finance website has an online system to report squatted lands. Thailand Though eviction has reduced their visibility or numbers in urban areas, many squatters still occupy land near railroad tracks, under overpasses, and waterways. Commercial squatting is common in Thailand, where businesses temporarily seize nearby public real estate such as sidewalks, roadsides, beaches, etc. and roll out their enterprise, and at closing time they fold it in and lock it up, thus avoiding the extra cost of having to rent more property. Europe In many European countries, there are squatted houses used as residences and also larger squatted projects where people pursue social and cultural activities. Examples of the latter include an old leper hospital outside Barcelona called Can Masteu and a former military barracks called Matelkova in Slovenia. Squats can be run on anarchist or communist principles, for example, Fabrica Ifanit, Villa Amalia in Greece, Ernst Kirchweger House in Austria has legal status or Blitz in Norway has legal status. Young people squat buildings to use as concert venues for alternative types of music such as punk and hardcore. The eviction of one such place, Ungdomshuset, in March 2007 received international news coverage. Others have been legalized. In England and Wales, squatting in a residential building became illegal in September 2012, with a maximum penalty of six months in jail, a £5,000 fine, or both. In Italy, there is Bussana Vecchia, a ghost town in Liguria which was abandoned in 1887 following an earthquake and subsequently squatted in the 1960s. In France, there is Collectif La Vieille Villette, a self supporting squat village which has been active since 1991. Austria There was a big squatting movement in the newly formed state of Austria following the First World War. Famine was a significant problem for many people in Austria and the Siedler settler movement developed as these people tried to create shelter and a source of food for themselves. Denmark Christiania is an independent community of almost 900 people founded in 1971 on the site of an abandoned military zone. In Copenhagen, as in other European cities such as Berlin and Amsterdam, the squatter movement was large in the 1980s. It was a social movement, providing housing and alternative culture. A flashpoint came in 1986 with the Battle of Riskade. Another flashpoint came in 2007 when Ungdomshuset was evicted. While not technically a squat until 14 December 2006, it was a social center used by squatters and people involved in alternative culture more generally. After a year of protests, the city council donated a new building. Topic France Paris moved to legitimize some popular artist squats in the mid-2000s by purchasing and renovating the buildings for artist residents. Topic Germany In the 1970s, squatting in West German cities led to a self-confident urban counterculture with its own infrastructure of newspapers, self-managed collectives and housing cooperatives, feminist groups, and so on, which was prepared to intervene in local and broader politics. The Autonomen movement protected squats against eviction and participated in radical direct action. After the German reunification, many buildings were vacated due to the demise of former state-run enterprises and migration to the western parts of Germany, some of which were then occupied by squatters. In Berlin, the now legalized squats are in desirable areas such as Midi and Prenzlauer Berg. Before the reunification, squats in Berlin were mostly located in former West Berlin's borough of Kreuzberg. The squats were mainly for residential and social use. Squatting became known by the term Instandbesetzen, from Instandsetzen renovating and Besetzen occupying. Squatters moved into the former factory site of J.A. Toff and Sohn in Erfurt in April 2001 and remained there until they were evicted by police in April 2009. The firm made crematoria for Nazi concentration camps. The squatters ran culture programs which drew attention to the history of the company. 
The occupation was known simply as Das Besetzte Haus, the occupied house, and was one of the most well-known actions of left radicals of that period in Germany. A book about the occupation was published in 2012, titled Toff and Sohn, Besetzung auf einem Tatterort Toff and Sohn, Occupation of a Crime Scene. Despite being illegal, squats exist in many of the larger cities. Examples are O in Frankfurt and Hafenstrasse and Rote Flora in Hamburg, though the last open squat of Berlin, Brunnenstrasse 183, was evicted in November 2009. Squatting can also take place for campaigning purposes, such as the Anatopia Project, which protested against a Mercedes-Benz test track. The Free Nationalists Movement Free Nationale Structuren was born from the right-wing squattings of the early 1990s. Topic Greece Starting from December 2012, Greek police initiated extensive raids in a number of squats, arresting and charging with offences all illegal occupants mostly anarchists. Notable squats like Villa Amalias and Petition and Skaramaga in Athens, Perardima, Marigopolio and Nikolao G. Kizi 33 in Patras, Antibiosi in Yanina, Orphanotrofio in Thessaloniki and other squats have been evicted. Greek authorities stated their intent to raid and evict all squats. Ireland The exact legal position of squatting in Ireland is ambiguous and the mechanisms for removing squatters from properties varies from case to case, sometimes going through the judicial process, other times not. Trespass and occupation of a property is not illegal, but as a definitive process for dealing with squatters does not exist, unlawful evictions do occur, sometimes with the support of the Garda Syachana Irish police. However certain squatters rights do exist and can be invoked in the form of adverse possession. An occupant is entitled to legal possession of the title provided they are in continuous and uninterrupted occupation of the property for 12 years. To claim adverse possession the occupant must register an intent to claim the property with the land registry. Squatting has no major tradition in Ireland, arguably in part due to the perceived strong position of the title holder. It has largely been confined to major cities but with the construction of ghost estates across the country there has also been a rise in occupations of residential spaces in rural areas. There have been major housing movements and periods of squatting in Ireland, including the activities of the Dublin and Derry Housing Action Committees of the late 1960s and early 1970s. Each had a militant campaign which participated in dozens or hundreds of actions and protests in demand of better housing conditions. In 2003, activists calling themselves Autonomous Community Spaces entered Disco Disco in Dublin's Parnell Square to turn the space in a social centre. They were violently evicted 24 hours later. From 2003 to 2004, the Magpie Squat was a residential space which housed activists in Dublin's Upper Leeson Street. It is also where the first meeting was held for the opening of what would become Dublin's first autonomous social centre Siomra Sprawi. In 2010 activists from Occupy Cork squatted a NAMA building in Cork City with the intention of using it as a community resource centre. It was vacated shortly after the occupation. In 2012 activists from Occupy Belfast squatted a Bank of Ireland building in Belfast city centre and used it as a social space. The occupation lasted several months before it was evicted. Squatting has seen a recent surge in Dublin City with frequent occupations of spaces. With squatting becoming more public, Dublin hosted the 2014 International Squatter Convergence, previously held in cities such as Dijon, Berlin and Brighton. Squatting also became popularised by the successful neighbourhood resistance to an attempted eviction of a large community used squatted space in Grangegerman in Dublin City in 2015. The news of the eviction attempt and eventual successful resistance spread across social media and international news. The squatted complex enjoyed widespread support in the area and was also publicly supported by the city's Lord Mayor, Christy Burke, and by Irish Times journalist Una Mullally. Since 2015, the building, which once housed Neary's Hotel on Parnell Street in Dublin's north inner city, was occupied and renamed the Barricade Inn by squatters. Italy In Italy, squatting has no legal basis, but there are many squats used as social centres. The first occupations of abandoned buildings began in 1968 with the left-wing movements Lata Continua and Pater Opereo. 
Out of the breakup of these two movements was born Autonomia Operaea, which was composed of a Marxist-Leninist and Maoist wing and also an anarchist and more libertarian one. These squats had Marxist-Leninist but also Stalinist and Maoist ideals and came from the left wing of Autonomia. The militants of the Italian armed struggle the New Red Brigades were connected to these squats. Moldova Squatting in Moldova is pretty new, as it started with Centro 73 in Chisinau in September 2010. This project is working and starts to be known in media. A second project of squatting in Chisinau in the old Turkish embassy 57, Alexei Mativici Street, called Ada Calais, was evicted by police in November 2010. <laughs> Netherlands. The Dutch use the term krakers to refer to people who squat houses with the aim of living in them as opposed to people who break into buildings for the purpose of vandalism or theft. After 2010, squatting still continues in many cities. There is often a Kroksprekure squatters consultation hour at which people planning to squat could get advice from experienced squatters. In Amsterdam, where the squatting community is still large, there are four Kroksprekure sessions in different areas of the city and so-called wild Squatting, squatting a building without the help of the local group is not encouraged. There are still many residential squats in Dutch cities. There are also some squats in the countryside such as a squatted village called Ruigord near Amsterdam. Fort Panerden, a military fort built in 1869, was evicted on November 8, 2006, by a massive police operation which used military machinery and cost 1 million euros. The squatters then re-squatted the fort on November 26 and have since made a deal with the local council which owns the fort. The deal states that the squatters will receive a large piece of land near the fort to start a community in the rural area in between the city of Nijmegen and Arnhem. In exchange, the fort was handed over to local authorities, who will turn it into a museum, with help provided by the squatters that used to live in Fort Panerden. In the past, squats sometimes went through a process of legalization. This is the case with the Porjabau in Rotterdam, which was squatted in 1980. In 1982, the inhabitants agreed to pay rent to the city council. The ORKZ Oud Rooms Katholieke Ziekenhuis NL Oud Rooms Katholieke Ziekenhuis in Groningen, squatted in 1979, is an old Roman Catholic hospital, which was declared legal in the 1980s. Well-known squats include the OT-301, Vrankrijk and the Binnenprey in Amsterdam, Anarais in Dordrecht evicted in 2009, Het Slokwis in Rotterdam and the Landbaubelling and Villa Vendex in Maastricht. De Blauwe Onslag in The Hague was evicted in 2003. Squatting gained a legal basis in the Netherlands in 1971, when the Supreme Court ruled that the concept of domestic peace which means a house cannot be entered without the permission of the current user also applied to squatters. Since then, the owner of the building must take the squatters to court or take a legal action in order to evict them. A law was passed in 1994 which made it illegal to squat a building which was empty for less than one year. There were several moves to ban squatting in the past. In 1978, the Council of Churches launched a protest which scotched the idea. In June 2006, two ministers from the Dutch government Sibylla Decker and Piet Hein Donner proposed a plan to make squatting illegal. Other ministers, such as Alexander Pechtold, were not in favour of this plan. Representatives of the four largest Dutch cities wrote a letter stating that it would not be in their interest to ban squatting. Squatters nationwide made banners and hung them on their squats in protest. On June 1, 2010, the squatting ban was accepted by both Houses of Parliament. Squatting in the Netherlands became illegal and punishable when a decree was sent out that the law would be enforced from 1 October. In protest, squatters in Amsterdam had occupied a former fire department the week before the law began returning it to the owner's control on 30 September and a riot occurred on 1 October when the police blocked a protest and led a horse charge upon it. In Nijmegen, on 2 October, there was also a riot. Following legal challenges, on October 28, 2011, the Supreme Court of the Netherlands decided that the eviction of a squat can only occur after an intervention of a judge. The Dutch government assessed the effectiveness of the new law in 2015, releasing a report giving statistics on arrests and convictions between October 2010 and December 2014. 
During this time period, 529 people have been arrested for the act of occupying derelict buildings in 213 separate incidents. Of the 529 arrests, 210 were found guilty. Of those convicted, 39 people were imprisoned for the new offense. Topic. Poland The oldest squat in Poland, Rozbrat, was created in 1994 in Poznan. Other squats are widespread across the country, Poznan Magadan, Odd, Zysk, Wrocław Era Kramera, Evicted and Closed, Centrum Reanimac G. Kultury, Wagenberg Breslau, Warsaw Serena, Przchodnia, Krakow Wilicka, Karandiru, Gdynia Brovery Hills, Gliwice Krzyk, Czestochowa Elektromadana, Bialystok Dysentrum, Grzegiads Szacz, Sosnowik M9, Gdansk NKS3 Jan and Ruda Slaska Berza. Topic. Spain Squatting of empty lots with shanty towns became popular in Spain in the 1960s and 1970s as a result of the shortage of urban accommodation during the rural exodus. Gradually it was substituted by high-rise blocks often built quickly and poorly. It was revived in the mid-1980s during La Mavita Madrileña, under the name of the Ocupa an unofficial spelling applied to occupation movement, when thousands of illegal squatted buildings were legalized. Influenced by the British levelers, the movement's popularity rose again during the 1990s, once more due to a housing crisis, this time related to the 1992 Summer Olympics and the concomitant urban regeneration. Property speculation and house price inflation continue to catalyze Ocupa activism. Related to the anarchist movement, Okupas support the ideal of workers' self-management and create social centers, such as Patio Maravillas in Madrid, which carry out various grassroots activities. The Okupa movement represents a highly politicized form of squatting, so much so that participants often claim they live in squats as a form of political protest first and foremost. The movement is involved in various other social struggles, including the alter-globalization movement. In 1996, during José María Aznar's presidency, the first specific legislation against squatting was passed and became the prelude to many squat evictions. In the barrio of Lavapiés in Madrid, the Escalera Caracola was a feminist self-managed squat, which was active from 1996 to 2005 and participated in the Next Generation Network. Other examples are the Escuela Popular de Prosperidad La Prospe o Minuesa. As of 2007, there were approximately 200 occupied houses in Barcelona. At least 45 of these, as Infosherpa, a collective event calendar, mentions, are used as social and cultural centers, so-called open houses. A number of popular rock groups have come out of this kind of venue, such as Sin Dios, Extremadoro, Columna de Ruti, Refugio and Platero Y2 in Madrid and Ojos de Brujo and Gadjo in Barcelona. In 2014, the attempts to evict the long running social centre of convives provoked major riots. The Basque Country is another area where a high number of houses have been occupied. There are at least 46 squats, or gaztetexes, youths' houses, in Basque. During the 1980s, a house was occupied by squatters in virtually every town, with the booming Basque punk rock thriving on the squatting movement, as it provided the badly needed premises for concerts, exhibitions, and other events. During the last 10 years, at least 15 Gaztetexes have closed down, often following protests and clashes with the police. Chabalismo shanty towns. Parallelly there has been a not ideologized current of shanty towns around big cities. Initially settled by sedentarized Gatanos and Mercheros, they became known after the 1980s as selling points for heroin and other drugs. As the Spanish nomads were transferred to public housing, the shanty towns became inhabited by poor immigrants, including Moroccans and Romanian Romas. The Cañada Real Galeana is an example. Topic. Switzerland There are squats in the Swiss cities of Bern, Geneva, Nyon, Winterthur, Lausanne, Basel, Biel, Bienne, Zurich and Lugano. The Rhino Retour des habitants dans les immeubles non occupés, in English, Return of inhabitants to non occupied buildings, was a 19 year long squat in Geneva. 
It occupied two buildings on the Boulevard des Philosophies, a few blocks away from the main campus of the University of Geneva. The Rhino organization often faced legal troubles, and Geneva police evicted the inhabitants on July 23, 2007. In Zurich, there were large riots when the Bin's occupation was evicted in 2013. The squatters moved to another building. Topic: United Kingdom. Topic: England. In England, squatting has a long historical tradition. The BBC states that squatting was a big issue in the Peasants' Revolt of 1381 and again for the diggers in the 17th century, who were peasants who cultivated waste and common land, claiming it as their rightful due. And that squatting was a necessity after the Second World War when so many were homeless. The BBC also reported in 2011 that the British government estimated that there were 20,000 squatters in the UK and 650,000 empty properties. On 1 September 2012, under Section 144 of the Legal Aid, Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act 2012, squatting in residential property was criminalized by the government, punishable by up to six months in prison or a £5,000 fine, or both. The same year saw the first successful prosecution for squatting, resulting in a 12-week jail sentence. However, squatting in a commercial building is still not a criminal offence. Scotland Squatting is a criminal offence in Scotland, punishable by a fine or even imprisonment, see Trespass Scotland Act 1865. The owner or lawful occupier of the property has the right to evict squatters without notice or applying to the court for an eviction order, although when evicting, they cannot do anything that would break the law, for example, use violence. Wales. In 2010, a representative of the UK bailiff company claimed that the number of people squatting in Wales was at its highest for 40 years. The high number of businesses failing in urban Wales has led to squatting becoming a growing issue in large cities like Swansea and Cardiff. Experts said, "...the majority of squatters are forced into the lifestyle by financial pressures." Based on the internal database of UK bailiff company, there were 100 cases of squatting in 2009, the highest for 40 years, following trends estimated by the Advisory Service for Squatters that squatting has doubled in England and Wales since 1995. As with England, from 1 September 2012, squatting in a residential building was made a criminal offence subject to arrest, fine and imprisonment. In December 2012 Cardiff Squatters Network was formed, to network together squatters citywide, and host skill share workshops on squatting legally in commercial buildings. <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle East Turkey <inaudible> 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 Gechekandu plural Gechekandular, is a Turkish word meaning a house put up quickly without proper permissions, a squatter's house, and by extension, a shanty or shack. Gechekandu Bolgizi is a neighborhood made of these informal settlements. Shortly after the eviction of Gezi Park, Don Kisit was occupied and stated to be Istanbul's first occupied and self managed social center. There are, or have been, several other political squats in Istanbul. Kafaraga in Kadikoy was a squatted neighborhood house evicted in December 2014. Kafaraga brings life, people, and productivity into that old rotting house. Said local Turin Yildirim, in Besiktas, a place was occupied on March 18, 2014 and named Birkin Elvan Student House after a 15-year-old boy who was shot during the Gezi protests and later died. Atapia was squatted in Ankara in June 2014 by anarchists, who claimed it was the city's first political squat. <laughs> North America <laughs> United States In the United States, squatting laws vary from state to state and city to city. For the most part, it is rarely tolerated to any degree for long, particularly in cities. 
There have been a few exceptions, notably in 2002 when the New York City administration agreed to turn over 11 squatted buildings in the Lower East Side to an established nonprofit group, on the condition that the apartments would later be turned over to the tenants as low income housing cooperatives. Community organizations have helped the homeless to take over vacant buildings not only as a place to live but also a part of larger campaign to shine a light on inequity in housing and advocate change in housing and land issues. Some of these include the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, Take Back the Land and Homes Not Jails. Squatters can be young people living in punk houses, low income or homeless people, street gang members, or artists. During the Great Recession there were increasing numbers of people squatting foreclosed homes. There were also reports of people resquatting their own foreclosed homes. Canada. In Canada, there are two systems to register the ownership of land. Under the land title system, squatter rights, formerly known as adverse possession, were abolished. However, under the registry system, these rights have been preserved. If a person occupies land for the required period of time as set out in Provincial Limitation Acts and, during that time, no legal action is taken to evict or in trespass, the ownership in the land goes from the legal owner to the squatter. The Francis Street squats in Vancouver were a row of six buildings squatted for nine months in 1990. They were evicted in a large operation and a film was subsequently made, called The Beat of Francis Street. In recent years there have been a number of public squats which have brought together the two main contemporary reasons for squatting, homelessness and activism. Examples are the La Fontaine squat in Overdale, a district of Montreal 2001, the Woodward squat in Vancouver 2002, the Infirmary squat in Halifax 2002, the Pope squat in Toronto 2002, the Seven Year squat in Ottawa 2002, the Water Street squat in Peterborough 2003, and the North Star Hotel in Vancouver 2006. These were squats organized by anti poverty groups which tended to have a short life expectancy. The Woodward's building was a derelict department store which had stood empty for nine years. After being evicted from the building, 200 squatters set up a tent city on the pavement outside. The action is credited with putting in motion the eventual redevelopment of the building. The Peterborough Coalition Against Poverty PCAP publicly squatted 1130 Water Street, a building which stood empty after a fire. The group offered to repair the place and return it to its use as low-income housing. City officials agreed to the repairs and then the city council voted to demolish the building. The cost of demolition was $8,900 and the cost of repairs had been projected to be $6,900. The North Star Hotel was temporarily squatted as a protest against emptiness by the Vancouver Anti-Poverty Committee. In 2011, the Occupy Toronto squat team squatted a basement at 238 Queen Street, West and offered to take on a lease for 99 cents a year. They were evicted after eight hours. <laughs> South America Around many South American cities there are shanty towns. Sometimes, the authorities tear the houses down, but often, the squatters simply rebuild again. The houses are built out of whatever material can be scavenged from the local area or bought cheaply. As time goes by, the squatters start to form communities and become more established. The houses are rebuilt piece by piece with more durable materials. In some cases, a deal is reached with the authorities and connections for sewage, drinking water, cable television and electricity are made. In Peru, the name given to the squatter settlements is Pueblos Jovenes. In Colombia and Venezuela they are called invasiones as in invading a property as squatting can be related to a building or an empty lot and in Argentina they are known as Villa Miseria. In Chile the correct term used for the squatting is the similar term used in Spain, Casa Ocupa. These houses share similar aspects with other squats around the world, such as being political and activist involved places, work as cultural and social centers and have their own subculture involved. They are normally associated with anarchist movement and they openly identify with the squatting movement, particularly the Movimiento Ocupa in Spain. The mayor number of Casas Ocupas are located in Valparaiso and Santiago de Chile. It must not be confused with another different housing situation which term is Tomas. These are particular situations of squatting that could be defined more like shanty towns, not necessarily involved with the Ocupa movement. 
Topic: <inaudible> Brazil. In Brazil, some of the squatter communities are called favelas, and a famous example is Roxina in Rio de Janeiro, estimated to be home of 100,000 people. Favelas are mostly inhabited by the poorest strata, and usually lack much infrastructure and public services, but in some cases, already have reached the structure needed for a city. They are equivalent to slums or shanty towns, and typically occupy unused land instead of unused or abandoned buildings. There were 25 million people living in favelas all over Brazil. As of 2004, in Sao Paulo, the largest favela is Heliopolis, with over 200,000 inhabitants. However, its occupied area has been officially recognized as a regular neighborhood of the city. There are also a number of squatter buildings in the inner city, the most famous of which was a 22 story building called Prestes Maia, whose inhabitants were finally evicted by the police in 2007 after a long conflict with the city administration. Inspired by this movement and increasing property speculation and gentrification have also emerged various occupations in buildings and unoccupied areas in big cities, see Homeless Workers Movement. There are also rural squatter movements in Brazil, such as the Landless Workers Movement, which has an estimated 1.5 million members. Oceania Australia. In the 19th century, a squatter was a person who occupied a large tract of crown land in order to graze livestock. The phenomenon is referred to in the song Waltzing Matilda. At first, this was done illegally, and later under license. From the 1820s, they were part of the establishment, hence the term squatocracy. Maps of pastoral lands were also known as squatting maps. This type of squatting is covered in greater detail at squatting pastoral. In more recent times, there have been squats in the major cities. It would be possible for squatters to be charged with criminal trespass under the Enclosed Lands Protection Act, but mainly, squatters are simply evicted when they are discovered. As in the United Kingdom, there is the law of adverse possession, but it is seldom used. <inaudible> Sydney In Sydney, streets of terraced houses in areas such as the Rocks and Potts Point were squatted to prevent their demolition in the 1970s. The Glebe Estate in Glebe, New South Wales was squatted in the 1960s and 1970s, and had an extensive influx of squatters in the 1980s. Also during the 1970s and 1980s, extensive parts of Woolloomooloo and Darlinghurst were also squatted, along corridors of houses bought to make way for new road works. Examples of these include the compound in Darlinghurst and along Palmer Street in Wulumooloo. Punks, political activists, musicians and artists also started squatting in the gunnery, a former Navy warehouse and training facility, in Wulumooloo, during the early to mid-1980s. This squat, a large warehouse with several unusual spaces able to be used as theaters or other venues thanks to its former use by the Navy became a critical site for the development of arts and music in Sydney in the mid to late 1980s, with independent musical and art events being held there regularly. It is now an arts centre. The artists squatting empty buildings on Broadway owned by South Sydney City Council were evicted in 2001, a few months after the 2000 Olympics. The Midnight Star was a squatted theatre used as a social centre, hosting music events, a cafe, a library, a free internet space, and a food not bombs kitchen. It was evicted in December 2002 following its use as a convergence centre for protests against the November World Trade Organization talks. In 2003, a legal squat was organized for 10 people who moved onto the site of an old incinerator at Green Square. A five year old squat was peacefully evicted in March 2008, when an office block in Balmain was demolished to make way for a park. The council voted to allow the squatters to stay in the building, which they called Iceland, until the plans for demolition were in place. One of the squatters said, about 20 people have lived here over the years and it's been a place for band rehearsals, art projects, people practicing dance routines, bike workshops. Squatting gives you a chance to think about things other than how you are going to pay the rent and ways to contribute to the world." The Squatfest Film Festival began in the Broadway Squats in 2001. It is both a celebration of squatting and a protest against the corporate capitalism of the Trophist Film Festival in Sydney. Every year, a site is occupied and films screened. 
The location is announced hours before screening begins. There were estimated to be more than 120,000 unoccupied houses in Sydney in 2011. Topic: <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne squats are usually located in the inner suburbs like Footscray, St Kilda and Coburg. They tend to be houses that are waiting for demolition. A well-known squat in Carlton was organized by international students in 2008. A squatter's handbook was produced by activists in 1993, 2001 and 2010. Topic: <laughs> Social centers. In Europe, it is common for buildings to be squatted to be used as social centers. Cafes, bars, libraries, free shops, swaps shops and gyms have all been created, with many squats also holding parties and concerts. Social centers are often a combination of many things that happen in one space with the aim of creating a space for people to meet in a non-commercial setting, whether it be for a party, political workshop, to see a film, have a drink or have breakfast. There are many squatted social centers around the world, but they exist mainly in countries where squatting is legal. Examples include Ernst Kirchweger House in Austria, the Rampart Social Centre in England, OT 301 in the Netherlands and Ungdomshuset in Denmark evicted on March 1, 2007, and demolished four days later. <laughs> Urban homesteading Urban homesteading is a form of self-help housing where abandoned private properties in urban areas are taken over by the building's usually poor residents. Sometimes this takes the form of squatting, which is not legal under many jurisdictions. Urban homesteading, in which residents rehabilitate the apartments through their own labor, may depart from squatting in some ways, especially philosophically. While both groups may work initially with no permits, architectural plans, or help from the government, self help housing aims to manage the buildings cooperatively, and residents may work collaboratively with a non profit organization or city government to legally obtain ownership of the building. In some cases, urban homesteading is an organic phenomenon that evolves as a grassroots strategy of residents for dealing with a lack of of affordable housing, or a sizable existence of abandoned, depressed, neglected or foreclosed housing stock. Some cities have used it as a solution to creating affordable housing. See also References Further reading 949 Market 2002, a zine by a group of people who squatted an abandoned pool hall in a very public way and created a community center in San Francisco. Bailey, Ron, The Squatters 1973, Penguin, UK ISBN 0140523006 Core, A. 1999 No Trespassing Squatting, Rent Strikes and Land Struggles Worldwide South End Press ISBN 0-89608-595-3 Cracking the Movement 1994, Amsterdam Squatter History and the Movement's Relation to the Media. Also available online Cracking the System 2008, a zine about squats and social centers in Europe inspired by the April 2008 initiative. Also available online. Curtis, Helen and Sanderson, Mimi, The Unsung Sixties, 2004, Whiting and Birch, ISBN 1861770448 Dots, Ian, 1910 of the Law, Property and Resistance in the United States AK Press ISBN 978-1849351188 Cotter, Nazima, 2016. The Autonomous Life, Paradoxes of Hierarchy and Authority in the Squatters Movement in Amsterdam reprint ed. Manchester, Manchester University Press. ISBN 978-1-78499-411-2. Katsafikas, G. The Subversion of Politics, European Autonomous Social Movements and the Decolonization of Everyday Life Humanity Books ISBN 1-57392-441-5 Also available online Squatting Europe Collective 2013. Squatting in Europe, Radical Spaces Urban, Struggles Minor Compositions ISBN 978-1-57027-257-8 Also available as a free PDF to Bachmann, Seth. 
War in the Neighborhood, a graphic novel about squatting on New York City's Lower East Side in the 1980s by World War III illustrated cartoonist and editor Tabachman, published by Autonomedia Trespass as a self-managed, open access, and unfunded journal about squatting. Website. Waterhouse, Richard 2005. The Vision Splendid, A Social and Cultural History of Rural Australia, Fremantle, Curtin University Books Topic External links Special issue of Mute Magazine on Global Slums Squat.net, Squat News from all over the world. Squatter City Blog Blog by writer Robert Newworth, who lived in squatter communities across the developing world Squatter's Handbook England 13th edition Wasteland UK documentary about squatting by Will Wright What's This Place? 2008 A booklet with stories from radical social centres in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Interview with director Tino Buchholz about his documentary Creativity and the Capitalist City Squatting in Amsterdam, 10 April 11 by R2.com Squatting in Poland, events and news.